That is Putin's bargaining chip to make sure that the northern European NATO allies that are getting cheap Russian natural gas via the Nord Stream pipelines are kept at bay. But if you blow up the pipeline, then Putin no longer has that bargaining chip. Right. We did blow up the Nord Stream pipeline. Like we, we did, guys. Had it, like we had every inkling and then video clips and then documentation and then politicians from as far back as like 2000 to now saying that we need to make sure that Europe depends on Western energy and not Eastern. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. If you go far enough east, you go west. If you go far enough west, you go east. I don't know where it stops. <laughs> I don't know where it stops saying. But all I'm saying is that it just, it just, so many times with the, with the, the 19 debate, so many times with like the, it just, it feels good when you just adhere to logic and you wait. Just adhere to logic and wait. And then usually more often than not, you'll be rewarded. And here's our fat, juicy reward that we're going to hand to ourselves because no one else is going to do it. We're going to hand to ourselves. Please, Sam. And listen, we don't, especially about this topic, we do not want to be, quote unquote, right. Because being right about this means increasing the chances of a global nuclear conflict, i.e. World War III, that could end all of us. Um, and what we're talking about is the Nord Stream pipeline. And if you'll recall... Last year, uh, I want to say August or September of 22, when it was blown up, which we were told at the time it was just an accident and they had no idea, according to the popular expert opinions, right, within the U.S. intelligence community, because we all know how trustworthy they are. Um, they were telling us it was an accident. They had no idea. Oh, my God, this is such a terrible thing. Uh, but we're not that upset about it if we're the you know, U.S. intelligence community because it kind of actually works to our benefit. And isn't it just fancy how that works out, that the things that play right into our hands just happen coincidentally, and isn't that just great? Well, if you'll remember, at the time, David and I risked uh, conspiracy theorist, theorist status. We, we risked being lumped in with Alex Jones. Um, according to most people, we didn't think it was a risk because, again, as David said, we just applied common sense, logic, and reason, and then waited. And we didn't even have to wait a full year to be vindicated to prove to you once again that at WMD Podcast, it's tomorrow's news today. Because we pointed out at that time that President Biden, Under Secretary Victoria Nuland, uh, current Secretary Anthony Blinken, uh, many high-ranking U.S. politicians were on record before the Nord Stream pipeline blew up I saying- Why for Christ's sake said it? Mm -hmm. Connolly's a rice said it. And that's way back. That's in the way back, son. Well, I mean, when it happened, she was like, eh, well, you know, him hawing around about it. But but like Biden said specifically in no uncertain terms, when when before Russia had even invaded Ukraine and we're and it was just like, will they or won't they? Oh. Biden said, Yeah, if they do, we will end Nord Stream. To which the reporter said, But you realize that ending Nord Stream doesn't just harm Russia. This is a jointly owned pipeline between Russia and Germany. And Germany is one of, if not, our, if not the strongest NATO ally we have. And if this pipeline is sabotaged, that's not just an act of war against Russia. It can be seen as an act of war against our own ally. And to which that Biden just kind of Sloughed off, sloughed off and said, yeah, it's if they invade, it, it will blow up. You're saying more contemporary. I was saying that Condoleezza Rice said it when she was, what, what was she with the uh, Bushes? Well, she was uh, Secretary of State right. back in the day. Right. But I mean, she, that's when she was interviewed and said it on 60 Minutes, I believe, or like 2020 I, or whatever it was. Yeah, I, I don't remember when the date was, but what I'm saying is the current, this has been the current people that were, the current people that were empowered to right. be able to actually act on their on their implicit threats right. uh were being uh pretty obvious about it beforehand and then when it happened we're like, "Hey, this is kind of a good thing." Ooh, how could that have happened? Uh Putin must have blown it up himself. Yeah, even though it blowing I'm up I'm making up I'm making too much money. God damn it, get rid of it. Even though it blowing up harms Putin the absolute most and takes probably, if we're talking about a chessboard, 
The Nord Stream pipeline was Putin's queen. So the idea that he would voluntarily sacrifice it uh, is was just completely unbelievable from the start. And so David and I just plied Mama, simple, just a mat. simple logic and reason to this set of basic facts and said, yeah, it's highly likely the United States was involved but in I, it or did it. No, we didn't. Like, yeah. Oh, what, you think that it's possible for us to blow up something that's 200 feet under the water? That's insane. Who has ever been down there except for everybody? No one. No way. Yeah. We can't pull it off with this kind of equipment. This kind of equipment. Come on, guys. Yeah. We're a third world country, as we all know. And the guy who vindicates us, an individual by the name of Seymour Hirsch, and for those of you who um, uh, maybe aren't familiar with American journalists and stuff like that, Seymour Hirsch is not some Alex Jones sort of nutbag who we're just hanging our hats on to vindicate us. Seymour Hirsch was the investigative journalist who... Uh, uh, discovered and disclosed to the American public the My Lai Massacre in the Vietnam War. He was involved in the reporting on the Watergate scandal. Uh, he was involved in breaking the information about the torturing of detainees at Abu Ghraib during Iraq War II. Um, Seymour Hirsch has a long, extensive history as an investigative journalist of writing highly controversial articles breaking news from sources, you know, that he doesn't disclose, but that are ultimately vindicated and that he was correct about when he writes the article. So Seymour Hirsch is not some some fly-by-night slappy like your your gracious co-host here who is just talking out his ass. When Seymour, Seymour Hirsch writes an article and says, I have sources that confirm X, Y, or Z, you should probably pay attention. CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, ABC, CBS, all of the mainstream sources should probably be talking about whatever it is that Seymour Hersh is writing about. And politicians and, and decision makers should be made to answer some questions that he raises. Well, February 8th, 2023, just, you know, a few months after the Nord Stream pipeline blew up, Seymour Hersh wrote an article over on his Substack, which will be included in the show notes page and on the, the links under these videos where he basically, and I'm going to give you the very, very Cliff Notes version. Um, operating from bases in Norway, the United States, a couple months before the pipelines ever blew up, ran a NATO exercise with some of its allies in the ocean where the, the Nord Stream pipeline runs. And as a part of that NATO exercise, some, I don't know if it was SEAL teams, but some special operation forces from the United States swam down and put C4 charges on the Nord Stream pipeline. And then a few months later, the pipeline blows up. They were remote detonated, and that's what caused the explosions on the Nord Stream pipeline. Seymour Hirsch uh, uh, details exactly this timeline of how this happened, how the United States worked with Norway to do it, et cetera, et cetera. And regardless of whether you think that what Seymour Hirsch has to say is true or not or whatever, questions should be flowing to the politicians and decision makers based on what Seymour Hersh had to say. Again, given his extensive career of being a multi-time corroborated investigative journalist. Um, now, we, David and I, didn't have the details on how all of this played out. Seymour Hersh's article does. I encourage you to read it. Um, but that's basically the cliff notes of what he says of how it was pulled off and the, in, the individuals that gave him this information were individuals in the United States military that were involved in the planning and conducting of this operation. So, yeah. So it's real news. Yeah. That's what used to be real news. Yeah. This is what journalists used to do. They used to actually tell the truth. It wasn't the third wing or the fourth wing of the goddamn government. It, speaking of which, I know we mentioned it on 134 which you should go check out as well. Uh, how do they find that, Dane? www.mindypodcast.com backslash 134. It's like I press a button and it just happens. <laughs> it, it's, mm, I like to have that power. Anyway, um, go check it out because they don't cover, we mentioned in that episode that they aren't covering the derailment. They are covering this. They are covering Hunter's laptop. They are covering Twitter files. They are covering this. They are covering that. All they're doing is telling you how you should feel about things. How you should feel about Elon Musk. He's a crazy kook. 
when not two months ago, he was the best person that's ever lived because he invented pretty much electronical vehicles. And he was on their side. It, again, like these people have no bounds. They have, this is what, if Watergate happened today, Don Lemon would be talking about the U.S. women's national team uh, securing a place in the next FIFA Women's World Cup. Like, it, it's not, I guess that's the problem nowadays. It's like you, you, you aren't being fed any information, but we still act like we know things. Like, there's no one sticking their neck out like, like they did. And if, or uh, what's his face? Uh, the, the, the guy that wrote the article, Seymour. Hirsch. I wanted to say Seymour, but so, I know you so did. bad. I saw you chuckling off camera. And I did. Like, and then he go, he goes like, he goes balls deeper. He said, he, he goes nuts. That's over. I was like, <laughs> I kept it together. And I want a trophy for that. I showed that he's not nuts. He's so. not nuts. So I was like, see more butts is nuts. So, oh my God. Anyway, moving on champ. It didn't take a lot. Like it, 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 in the educational corner of this podcast, how we'll teach you our tricks to um, predicting the future. You just look at what they're saying, take off all the, like, this is going to be the death of this, or this is the flamboyant shit. Just look at what happened. The pipeline blew up. It hurts countries right before winter. What countries does it hurt? Germany. We could probably smooth it over with them. They're an ally. And who does it hurt worst? The country that we are most in disagreement with at the current moment. And we had nothing to do with it. It just so happened to pop at just the right time for this country to squeeze another country that it's its rival by the balls and real hard. Real hard. And you you don't think that we did it and all that our administration said is like, sometimes things blow up, you know, I, I don't know. Shoot. They should have, they should have done their due diligence and made sure the safety regulations were up to par. C-134 on WMD podcast for regulations and how well this government, this government sees its own regulations on safety precautions. So again, it didn't take, what, a stone's throw of belief to believe that we might have done this? And it was always, there was always that timber over it. Even when they would ask him questions like, did the U.S. have any? He's like, well, no, sometimes you, I, uh, they would just give some cockamamie answer. It's like, sometimes pipes burst. I don't know, shit. Yeah. yeah. It's like. And when we first talked about this, like right when it happened back in, in uh, 2022, is we put it in the Epstein segment. And the reason why I remember that is because the Epstein moment on this was the example from World War I, where the very first thing after Britain declared war on Germany was they went to the, uh, Atla the Atlantic uh, telegraph wire between Germany and the United States and they cut the wire. Why? Because they wanted monopoly control over the narrative of what was going on in World War I to be able to propagandize the American public and get America to come in on the side of Britain and its allies against Germany. Um, and that was the, the Epstein moment that we tied to why uh, the United States would have the incentive to do this in, in this context is because the reason why Nord Stream, and we said it at the time, you know, we'll just reiterate it here. The reason why I called it uh, Russia's or or Putin's queen on the chessboard is because the pressure that is being put on Russia, both in terms of sanctions and everything else and military equipment flowing into Ukraine and stuff like that, is not the United States alone. The United States is the primary supplier of it, but it's in conjunction with its NATO allies. But as we know, winters in Northern Europe are very, very cold and having the... Um, energy to be able to keep the houses warm and to keep the people happy and therefore keep them not paying attention to what the governments are doing to the government of, of Russia, it's imperative that cheap energy keep flowing into Europe so that 
you know, the NATO out, the populations of the NATO allies are kept content, primarily Germany. And so what the United States saw the Nord Stream pipelines as is, is Putin's kind of ace up his sleeve to be able to say, all right, Germany, you want to apply some pressure on us? You want to get involved in our situation over here in Ukraine? We're just going to turn off the natural gas to you. And that is Putin's bargaining chip to make sure that the Northern European NATO allies that are getting cheap Russian natural gas via the Nord Stream pipelines are kept at bay. But if you blow up the pipeline, then Putin no longer has that bargaining chip, right. which is why the pipeline was critical to Putin and Russia and the United States and every incentive to blow it up. And we were told. And they're risking nuclear war to take that chip away. And we were Russia. told the entire time that that just happened naturally. They're pushing for nuclear war with this maneuver. It could potentially, excuse me, it could potentially lead to nuclear war. It could potentially lead to, like you just said, World War III. And going back to everything that we've ever said about every government, accountability. Where was it? They didn't even own up to the thing that they did. <laughs> How the fuck can they be held accountable for nuclear war? It'd be a, well, we should have seen it coming. It's like, shoulda, woulda, coulda. How many times did they, how many times does the government get a shoulda, woulda, coulda? Get a mulligan. Get a, well, I accidentally let, you know, a lot of people die that didn't have to. Every because time. Sometimes they say words that are no-no words. They're instead of they're literally the only institution in society that's incentivized to fuck up. Because when they do, the argument is always, well, if you gave us more power, if you gave us more money, that fuck up wouldn't have happened. So give us more. I mean, it, it's it, such a it's so it, it's, it's not tremendously complex. And this is the reason why I blew up a couple episodes ago on the guy who was talking, you know, about the Mr. B segment about, oh, well, you know, government should be doing this. This is not rocket science stuff here. Us being able to call this shot right when it happened and then just so happened to be vindicated by Hirsch a few months later, uh, it's, you, you don't have to be particularly bright to figure this stuff out. You just have to look at human beings as they are and look at the incentives that are lined up on each side and just play a probabilities game. What's more likely? Is it more likely that Russia did it? To themselves, Occam's razor. Is it more likely that the United States did it to get a leg up and and take a, a, a major, probably that the was, biggest bargaining chip their, away from that Russia? That was their thing. Of course, it does. And that wasn't the thing, though. They said that Putin's so crazy, he probably blew it up himself. Like, no, yeah, they definitely. That's, they that was said that argument. was the line that they were saying. It's like that. Even if you are the Mad King, to go back to Game of Thrones. You're not that mad. Like, you're never going to chop your dick off and throw it at a crowd mad. Yeah. Like, like yeah, that's you literally... Have, that, even if you're crazy, you still have self-interest. Right. Like, yeah. Jesus Christ. And then people are, yeah, Putin's losing it. Yep, yep. It's like, don't... These are the same people that would have drank the Kool-Aid at fucking Jonestown. These are the same people that were like, no, you know what? This guy has to fuck my wife because it's God's will. Yeah. I don't want to look at my life any further than that. And just like, you know, just to kind of piggyback to, to kind of finish this out, as, as Dave and I always tell you about, look at what these people get outraged over versus what they don't. Kind of in that same vein, look at what stories that the mainstream media chooses to report on versus the ones they don't. Right. When the pipeline initially blew up and they wanted to try to push the narrative that Russia did it. It was all over every media yeah, source. Yeah. It was Nord Stream blew up. Oh my God, Russia, Russia, Russia. When they found out that that was a losing battle and, and you had to suspend all credulity to believe that bullshit and the, the American public wasn't buying it, then they just dropped that story entirely, didn't talk so about it anymore. Words. And then a few months goes by, Hirsch breaks this story and there's not a word of it on mainstream media. Why? Because A, it makes them look bad because with all their resources and, and money, they didn't dig in and figure out what one guy could. And B, they don't want to ask the follow-up questions because they've been instructed, they've been instructed by the ones that control them not to ask the questions. You're not going to see anybody asking Victoria Newland or Anthony Blinken or Sullivan or Jake Sullivan or 
Joe Biden, you're not going to see anybody asking them any follow-up questions about this stuff because they don't want to know. They're not paid to know. They're paid to not know. They're paid to stick their heads in the sand. And you and I are just along for the ride because if these fucking morons pop off World War III, there ain't a whole Who, wider... They're going to be deep, fighting it. They're going to be fighting it themselves, right? There's not a whole is it gonna be wider us? deep enough for us to be digging in. Forget fighting it, even if you don't have to go fight it. And you're just living in your shack out in the middle of nowhere, nowheresville, America, hoping to just wait for the whole thing to blow over. A nuke drops in close enough proximity to you, you ain't much longer for this world. nukes drop enough, this world isn't going to be so anymore. You know, if if you're not going to hold these these people's feet, and I by these people, this. I mean, I mean the Paul, I mean the uh, like. The, 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 the faux journalists who claim that they deserve respect and that you're terrible if you castigate the mainstream media. I mean, this is the most important thing in human civilization as we know. Yes, this is the continued existence of life on this planet right. at stake here. And so to let these people just play games with that is... I don't know. I get worked up about a lot of stuff, but this one really takes the cake. I am shocked that this, that there is not massive, violent, global outrage over this at the, the government's complicity. The, the, first of all, the governments that perpetrated it and then the complicity of their allies to not say, bro, you went too far. This is fucked up. You don't do this. You don't do this. But here we are. You got to rely on a Again, the accountability comes down to no, us. Nothing podcast. You have to be the yeah. give you the facts. The Australian 121st political. Podcast. We gotta have cracked the top 100. I'd hope so. But <laughs> all I'm saying is that if, if we don't hold them accountable for this, or if the media that we trust so dearly and intrinsically, if that doesn't hold it, if this isn't put it this way. If this isn't evidence enough that you can't trust the media that you're getting from CNN, Fox News, CNNBC, MSNBC, whatever the fuck, whatever you choose to watch, if this isn't evidence that they don't want you to know the things that you should, then we, we, we obviously you're not tuning into this podcast. And if you have, then don't watch that shit anymore. It's, it's the basic it's the basic thing because you're not getting educated you're getting indoctrinated that's that's true what it is they're not telling you anything and again if you think that you're a conservative and you watch Fox News Fox News and you get you get fair and balanced you get all they didn't cover it either they're not covering this shit either despite how it makes their foe the Biden administration look so again I don't I don't know anything else to say other than, Dane, do you have any final thoughts? Well, a nice little cherry on top of this whole thing is, at the time, it's now been eclipsed by the Ohio train derailment, but at the time, this was one of the largest ecological disasters in human history. The amount of, I want to say, methane maybe it was, but oh. anyway, whatever. The amount of gas that was released from this into the atmosphere, into the ocean and atmosphere. eclipsed the total emissions of several countries. By the way, what is that so, government that isn't talking about this, that totally did it? What is it always talking about? Emissions? Emissions. Yeah. They're super concerned with emissions. But you they just do a cheeseburger because cows fart, but they'll blow up a pipeline because reasons. Because we had to. Don't you understand, Stephen? And yet I haven't seen any, any press conferences at all of, of uh, Greta Thunberg saying, how dare you? Why would you blow up the pipeline? <laughs> I die. <laughs> I sailed here from Norway. 